Guys, I want to talk about uh, Spelunky, almost always, but also specifically in this video, because every time I run across a game developer, a game designer, they are in love oh, yeah. with Spelunky, in love with it, and I want to know why. So yeah. I invited Derek, who is the creator of Spelunky, and Doug Wilson, who created Joust and Button and all those other crazy games that you've seen us play. And when I ran into you at GDC, Doug, you were just like, yeah. I want to talk about Spelunky, I want to play Spelunky, yep. Spelunky's the be best. Best game of the last decade. So sure. I thought wow. what we would do is we would have these guys go through a game and just uh, ask some design questions, some stuff, get the Spelunky secrets. Yeah. So jump in and get started, guys. Right. So, what we're, so we're playing co-op. Against your will. You're <laughs> I'm a, you I'm want a, to play single player. I'm a, I'm a solo player guy, but that's yeah, good. Well, It's cool, try new things. That's what this game's all about, so. Let's explore over here. So you want to be like thorough, right, about the level. Get as much gold you as do. possible for, for later. So what what is the initial attraction that game designers have to Spelunky, Doug? Is there something that like most players are missing here, or...? or... I, well, you gotta stick with it. Mm -hmm. So I gotta admit, I wasn't that into it at first. Um, and my roommate, uh, Niflas, who's a uh, former, he uh, former roommate, uh, he, would, he was playing all the time, and I, you know, I started watching him, and then I started playing with him, and slowly, kind of over time, the genius of this thing reveals itself to you. And, and you're not a paid actor. I'm not, not a paid actor, actor right? I like you're a real God, person. I'm not a, a paid actor. The, the thing about this game is uh, it treats you like an adult, right? And there aren't many games these days that treat you like adults. Um, Meaning what? So like, this game is brutally difficult. If you die, you die, and you have to start over, right? And in fact, you only have one life. Health is difficult to come by. There are all sorts of insane traps, um, and uh, I think in many ways the controls are really nice, but they're balanced for an expert player. I mean, I think that's a good point about games in general these days. Like, I, they're, they're made for, in a lot of ways they're designed for players that don't play a lot of games or, right. you know, they really want to cater to that market. And um, I don't know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because in other art forms, like, right. you know, when people write a novel for yeah. adults, there's not like a section in the middle of the novel that's like, oh, and here's you know here's a part for people who just started reading. Right. You know, <laughs> but like games do that all the time. It's like, right? Imagine War and Peace. Oh, like I gotta make this more accessible to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever. Um, Listen. Did you just say Spelunky is the War and Peace of video no, games? No, War and Peace has got <laughs> War and Peace has got nothing on Spelunky. Wow. Oh, man, let's be honest here. So what's you. what's your player strategy here, Doug? Because it looks Oops, like you go spider. for every little thing. You definitely go for the damsel. Uh, see, I, I, I'm a, kind of a methodical player because the thing is, the, the, the first world, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy, but the later worlds are super difficult. So you want to be kind of as equipped and as ready as possible. Um, I feel like that backfires on me though. I get, I get like psyched out. Uh, like I'll, I'll have like a million bombs and a jetpack and a everything. I'll be like, I'm the most overpowered spelunker there ever was. And then I'll just die in the stupidest way. Yeah. <laughs> Because I get a little I too brave. Spike boots. The thing about this it's game, good. right, is that like I was terrible at this at first. Like mm -hmm. I'm not actually particularly good at video games, but this is like getting good at this game is two things. It's uh, and this is part of the reason that like I'm so interested in this game. It's one just physical skill, right, of like learning the sorry the um. controls and um, right because the running's fast, mm -hmm. the jumping is a little difficult, but it's I think. And I think what I respect so much about it is it's balanced for an expert player, right? So the more you, um, it's like almost like some crazy car that's hard to drive at first, but like once you're once you're good at driving it, it just feels really amazing. So owning this game's like it's like owning a Lambo. You can yeah, think about it like that. Yeah, it's basically it's the War and Peace slash Lamborghini <laughs> of video games. Uh, but the other thing is, right? Oh, oh man, Whew. there's all this domain knowledge. Like you mm -hmm. start to learn like what items are good in what situations, and to get to the City of Gold is this whole sequence that you have to unlock, and like hopefully we'll be able to show this on camera, where you have to get this item, which opens up this item, which opens yeah. up this item. So there's this feeling of like reward as you're learning this world and you're learning the system. I think that's another really amazing thing about this game is these like procedural interactions that I, and I wonder from Derek, like how much, like 
you know, when the boomerang guy like steals a boomerang in the store and like the, the shopkeeper gets mad at you, like how much of that was intentional? These like kind of, the system just starts. Uh... Uh, you know, some of it was, a lot of it wasn't. Um, you know, for example, like the, like this one, this one situation that um, Tom Francis wrote about where a boomerang guy went into a store that happened yeah. to have a boomerang. He uh -huh. picked it up and it was like a boomerang that was for sale. Yeah. And then he just walked out of the store with it. And so he shoplifted, like the enemy yeah. shoplifted and it pissed off all of the yeah. shopkeepers on the level. Oh, you wow. Know? Yeah. Okay. Because because if you steal something, obviously yeah. all the shopkeepers get angry. But it like, turns out if a monster steals something, they also get angry. Because boomerang yeah. guy just wanted right. a boomerang. Yeah. And that <laughs> that was a scenario that I didn't plan. Yeah. That was just something where you know the boomerang guy is looking for boomerangs if he doesn't have one, and the shopkeepers get mad if any item that's for sale leaves his shop. Yeah. But see, this is this is really interesting game design where you like set up an interesting enough world and like all sorts of crazy stuff that you never foresaw like just starts happening, um, which makes this world, you know, feel richer than like it might otherwise feel. So yeah, there's, that, like, there's enough complexity here that the world just starts doing stuff on its own. That's it's totally like a roguelike thing though. Like that was directly, that right. kind of idea was directly inspired by roguelikes because, I mean, I think that's an aspect of those games that's really interesting and fun that yeah. um, usually takes a back seat in the discussion uh, compared to like the random level generation. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, most roguelike games, like things kind of interact with one another on this very fundamental level like I was talking about before. And yeah, it does feel, it does end up making the game feel like more of a real world. So the, the, so the, the, the world we're in the jungle, mm -hmm. I feel is like the real bottleneck for people. Yes. Like learning, like I took me forever um, because it, it, it took a long time for me to be able to consistently get to the ice world from the jungle. Yeah. And, and so the problem is this like level is there's like really confined spaces and you have these tiki traps, which are like the worst, like those yeah. things there that are incredibly dangerous. I kind of like difficulty ramps where it, it's like really hard, mm -hmm. sort of earlier on in the game, like in the first half of the game. And then, um, you know, in, in terms of Spelunky, it's like level two, it really just throws a lot of things at you. So yeah. this, this is, I don't know. It's a it's a point. It's like a real big test of your ability at this point. And that, and it's true. Like shit. I think the later levels are shit, shit, shit. easier. You know when oh. you actually get to them mm -hmm. um, relative to, to level two. But I like that. Oh, oh dang. Doug. Oh man. I hate seeing those torch. beehives. Yeah. Yeah, these are I panicked nasty. and I fell. Yeah. That's really bad. New mistake. Bees can't go in water. <laughs> But I do, you know, this kind of goes back to uh, what you were talking about earlier, Doug, which is like, this is a game for grown-ups. This is not a game yeah. that was focus grouped or play tested. Oh yeah, that felt good. Uh, right, so we, you know, it was interesting. I, I asked Derek earlier, like, you know, do, does he know statistics of like, X players die in this world and X players have made it to this world. Because you always see that now where developers right. like release things that say that. And, and Derek, the answer was no, right? Like you don't have in-depth statistics. No, I don't. Was it you who said on Twitter the other day that like big, big budget games and big budget movies both like to keep the pacing up? Because if you hit a bottleneck, if you get stuck, you get kind of frustrated and Oh, in, yeah. a lot, in a lot of big budget games, they don't want you to get stuck. They don't want you to get no, frustrated. They, they want you to keep moving and have fun. I mean, that's why you see, like, in a lot of those games, like, there are checkpoints all over the place. And, you know, if you die two times, they ask you, like, would you like to try easy mode? Seems yeah. like you're having trouble here. <laughs> um, that type of thing. But, you know, Splunky's just really not that type of game. It's, it's more of, like, an arcade game um, in terms of the difficulty. We're so accustomed to these these things that are just video game rules now, where it's like, as you get farther, it's gonna get harder. You can expect it to get harder by X amount of percent. And so it's just kind of crazy to see like, yeah, the jungle is really hard, and then you get to the ice caves and you feel like you're really good. Yeah. But it's also that the ice caves are just like a little Going easier in a way. Whoa. Ooh. Should we try to go for the jetpack? Yeah, I think so. We got to, <laughs> I mean, we're on camera. We gotta do this. Oh, look out. 
You have to say look out a lot when you're playing so, co-op. So the, the other thing about, I'll, I'll, get, that, I'll get that guy. <laughs> oh, okay. sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay. Be careful because the boomerang, know, the boomerang can yeah, like, I, drag I, him back. Was... <laughs> so I love that. You were just talking about the, the exploding UFO. If you use a boomerang, it'll try to carry it back to you. And then just the way the, yeah, the way exactly. the physics works, <laughs> it yeah, it tends to like the boomer uh, or the UFO is like bouncing on the boomerangs. It's coming back. Sorry, oh, I know there. God. Oh. Yeah, co-op's kind of a different beast. Whoa! Oh my. Whoa! You're still alive. You can do this. Get. You can do this. Where's your? Oh. Fuck. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Uh, oh. <laughs> Panic. That's not, I had no oh. ropes. Where was your stuff? <laughs> oh, it was like all the way uh, on the left hand side. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, we were super distracted. <laughs> At some point, I even forgot. You're to good, look man. For it. Awesome. Be sure to subscribe here at Rev3 Games for uh, more masochistic stuff like this. I'm just going to bring people in more and have them have them fail at their own games on camera. Yeah. It makes you me love feel that. it makes me feel better You're about sick. failing. Please, please do. <laughs> You're sick, man.